Hi, I'm Roddy Graham, Tweed Bank Primary P4 teacher and newly appointed Inspire Strategic Lead for the Eildon West Cluster in primaries. And this is an Inspire Q&A video that I've put together, which goes through some questions that have been sent in to hopefully enhance and improve uh, teaching and learning through the Inspire program. Each of these videos will focus on some different skills that you can improve on, different methods that you can use to enhance and improve your teaching and learning skills. On this week's video, our topics are as follows. Uh, giving verbal feedback digitally, using digital manipulatives in numeracy, and also using formative assessments with Kahoot during home learning. So we'll go over those three topics in this week's uh, video. I'll put some little timestamps in the comments so you can find exactly where those sections start if you're only interested in one of them, and we'll move on from there. We'll start today's video with some work on digital verbal feedback. The question today is, is it possible for me to provide verbal feedback using the iPad? My school uses Teams, but I can only see a written feedback box via assignments. So unfortunately, this kind of comes in good news and not so good news. The not so good news is that there isn't a actual verbal feedback method on assignments. You can't record your voice on assignments and then send it over, which is something that I wish Teams would have, but unfortunately it isn't there just now. There are some other options you do have though. One of them is that you can give some verbal feedback on Teams in channels, but the limitation there is that the whole class can hear it. Pupils could listen back to the written uh, feedback though using what's called the immersive reader on assignments and I'll talk you through that in a wee bit uh, later on. And another option is to use voice memos and you could email the pupils that feedback. So I'll show you how to get verbal feedback on Teams in channels, how to pupils are able to use immersive reader and also another option with the voice memos too. So one way of providing digital feedback to pupils on Teams is if you go and use your channels, you can then send uh, verbal feedback this way. The only downside to this is that everyone will have access to it. So if you want to provide personal feedback to someone, then you have to take it in consideration that the rest of the class will be able to hear it. If you press a new post at the bottom of the screen like so, you're given the options there to type a message, put in some emojis or take a, a photo. But on the right hand side, there's a microphone button. And if you hold that in and say your words that you want to say then the following thing will happen i think it works on this screen record so i'll give it a go hi just showing Eildon west how to use the voice recording function on teams channels so you can see there that when i held it in it said that it was recording it was showing me the length of time here you can listen back to your clip by pressing the play button you can press the bin button if you want to delete it and re-record or you can press the arrow button to send it to the person you want to send it to so that will put it in pupils are able to press the button on their screen and they are able to listen to it now if it is feedback for one person or a group of people then a good way to do, uh, go about that is if you press the reply button you can then tag someone in on a message. So if I, for example, wanted to tag in me, I don't think I'd be able to do that, but say I wanted to tag in a channel or I wanted to tag in someone's name, then I have the option of being able to do that, okay? So you can tag them in, you press the shift and at key, then you type in the person's name that you want to send the feedback to, give their name a little click at the bottom, it'll turn purple on the screen, and if you press send, then they will get a little notification on their iPad, which tells them that they have been uh, sent this feedback to them. So that's one way of doing it if you want to do it to a whole class or to a, spe a specific person using the at function. So another option for verbal feedback involves you typing out your written feedback in assignments, as I'm sure most of you are familiar with. And then what pupils can do with that is they can listen back to it using the immersive reader. So this is a similar view to what pupils get. This is the kind of student view option that I have on assignments. It shows me one of the assignments that I've had there, literacy, personal writing on Christmas, and all the instructions down there. But at the bottom of it, uh, pupils have got this option too. It's called the immersive reader. If we click on immersive reader, that will open up this slide here and it basically turns all of the words from the assignment into an audio file. Now, the start of this will be all of the instructions that you put down in your assignment. But if you scroll it right the way down, if people do this too, then underneath that, your feedback will appear. Now, this is the instructions that I've put out and there's no feedback on this one, but I can assure you that if your pupils come down to the bottom, your feedback will be there too. All you then need to do is you need to click on the word you want it to start on, close it down there, press play. Upload, Upload your, your pages, pages document, document to Teams, Teams assignment, assignment or email, or email to, me. to me. I will, I will give, give feedback, feedback once, once sent, sent over. over. 
So you'll get the slightly robotic voice who's uh, saying the words out, but you can use that for your uh, comments that you put down. So that if people's maybe struggle to read or would just prefer to hear the comments rather than reading them, then they've got that choice too. What you can also do in Immersive Reader is you can change the text size. So you can make it bigger, smaller. You can change the font if you want to use that. Good old Comic Sans is there as well. Um, lots of things that you can do there. You can also change the voice as well. You can make it read faster, read slower, or go between male and female as well. So the choices are there for your pupils. They will get the feedback in their immersive reader if they scroll past all of the instructions. One of the final options that you have for sending some verbal feedback to your pupils is by using the Voice Memos app and then emailing your clips over to your students. So if you click on Voice Memos there, it will open it up and you can see that you have all your recordings down the left hand side, but the red button at the bottom is your way to start recording a voice memo. So if you press on that, you will see that every single word that I'm saying just now is currently being recorded and that gets put into a little clip. You can pause it if you want to, you can edit it in whichever ways you want to, you can go back and replace little clips as well, which is quite handy. But when you press done, and the little um, clip is there. At the top it says Ash Lone, and that just has my little location because it's uh, been ticked in the settings, so it'll come up with where you live there, but you don't need to have that as your uh, name if you don't want to. You can press edit, and then you can delete things, you can crop bits out if you make mistakes, you can do what you like in there. But then to send it to a pupil, the easiest way to do it is if you click on the where it says Ash Lonan, you can rename it. So you could say verbal, spell it right, verbal feedback for pupil, press enter, and then that renames the file for you. The little share button at the top, which is to the left of the heart. You can then from there choose Outlook, and up will pop your email. You can type in who you're sending it to and they will get an M4A file, which is an audio file sent to them. You can click the send button on your email and that will send the file directly to them. Our next focus this week is on using manipulatives for numeracy and maths. Question is, I have been using lots of concrete materials in maths this session. Is there any electronic resources pupils can access to continue this remotely? The best website that I can suggest for using this is one that I've used for many years and it's called MathSpot. Uh, it's jam-packed with different types of digital manipulatives. They are very easy to access for pupils of any age as well. It's helpful though if pupils add this website to their home screen for easy access and I'll show you how to do that as well as a few examples of some of the manipulatives on MathSpot in the next part of the video. So the site that I mentioned for digital manipulatives is MathSpot. Easy to find if you just go into Google, type in MathSpot, that's the first link that comes up and that takes you onto the home page. When you're on there, you're looking to get the second section. So move past GCSE resources and you see manipulatives. Five are shown on the home page. If you press view all manipulatives, a whole host of them will appear on the next screen. So you can see there that there are a whole host of different manipulatives that are there in digital form for pupils to access. Ones that I commonly use, I would say, are counters place value. I'll let you have a little look into that just now. So what you see here is the counters on the left hand side. You get ones, tens, hundreds and thousands to start with. But if you need to go beyond that, you can change them up here. You can have 10,000, 100,000, million counters as well. Or you can even go into decimals as well. And you can see those that appear there. The best way to use it often if you're doing addition and subtraction is you might want to show a table with numbers on. So you can see ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands that are there, and then you can put your counters over into the right one. What I really like doing on uh, MathSpot with these is I really like the grouping and the exchange function. If you have a look little here, what I'll do is I'll show you. If you have 10 ones, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If you add an 11th one, and then you group them on top of each other, like so, you can group all of them there. What will happen is you press group and it makes it into 110 and 11. Okay, so the grouping button is really good for that. It's very similar with the exchange. If you want to exchange a 10 into 1, you press the 10, 
press exchange and it puts it back into ones. So that's a really handy one, place value counters. It's something that I've used an awful lot of the time in primary four and in primary seven as well. Some of the other ones that I quite like using, counting sticks are pretty good. So these ones, you can change the, the parts that you've got. You can have as many as you want there. 10, 20, however many you want. You can change the color as well, depending on what you have. Then what you can do with this, something that I found quite useful, is if you take a screenshot of it, like so, and then click the screenshot at the bottom, you're then given the option to use a pencil. So you might want to be doing, for example, some counting in fives. You can change your pencil, and then on there, you can do, well, this is five, this is 10, 15, 20, etc etc so you can write there on top of it and then what the pupils can do as well press done press save to photos and they get their own photo version of that i'll just cancel that just now that's another one that i quite like using is counting sticks and the final one that i want to show you which i find quite handy especially for uh fractions work is your fractions wall so this one here, it shows you a full fractions wall there. You can then move the pieces about. So you could say, right, there's a half. And then if I move two quarters beside that, then it's very easy to see that one half is the equivalent to two quarters. Brilliant, brilliant site. It's something I've used for many, many years. The guy, Jonathan Hall, who created it is at Study Maths on Twitter. If you fancy giving him a follow, he's very good on there. Loads and loads of different ones that you can have. There'll be stuff that you use a lot of the time in school, but in digital form. The way that I would suggest you do it, if you're, say, if you're really keen on using a specific um, manipulative or if you just want pupils to have the whole uh, set for them, is I would add it to your home screen. So the way that you do that, if you wanted this full page of manipulatives on your home screen, if you press the share button, the square with the up arrow, and then from there, you can uh, select add to home screen. If we press that once, you can change it here. You can, it, the, by default, it says manipulatives math bot, but if you want to call it something else, you can. And then if you press add, you will see that it adds it onto the home screen so that rather than pupils having to go onto their iPad each time and type in math bot, type in manipulatives, they can just click it and it opens up. So that's a really, really cool way of ensuring that pupils have it on their iPad at all times. It similarly works if you go into a specific one. So if you go into counters, place values and open those ones up. So again, if you use your home screen button here, press that, add to home screen, it'll put the place value counters there. Press add and it gives you the link there on their home screen. Our final focus in this week's video is formative assessment. The question is, my class have enjoyed using Kahoot in class via the smart board. What's the best way to use Kahoot during home learning? There's two options I would suggest for this, and it kind of depends on how you're delivering your teaching. If you're using live lessons, there's one way of doing it. If you're using pre-recorded, then there's another way of doing it. For live lessons, what I'd suggest is using the share screen option to display questions as you would on your smart board, and then ask your pupils to join with the pin, just like they do in class. For pre-recorded work, I would set up your Kahoot as a challenge and then use the pin given for pupils to access that. What I'll show you just now is how to set up for share screening and uh, setting up for the live lessons and also how to set up Kahoot for a challenge. So this is explaining how to use Kahoot if you're doing any live lessons. So as you'll know, you'll be able to set up your meetings on uh, Teams and then it will land in your calendar. And then if you press join, then you're able to get onto this, uh, the actual call. So once you've set that up, you'll obviously join your meeting as you do with any Teams meeting. Um, and then what you're looking for is that button at the bottom with the uh, rectangle and the up arrow, which says share screen. And then you're looking for the share screen option that's there. I can't press it because I'm on the call in the demo video, but what will come up will be an option that says uh, Microsoft Teams start broadcast. Then if you click that, whatever is on your screen will be replicated to your pupil screens during that meeting. So that includes the Kahoot app. So then when you go and open the Kahoot app up, you'll see your Kahoots that are there. If you've signed up and you've started to create some of your own, or you can search for some too. You can see example here is the instrument of the orchestra quiz. And then you're looking to press play 
And then from there, the teach option, which takes you to the live version of Kahoot. The options will load up and then you're given lots of different game options. You can turn them on, turn them off as you go. But what you're looking to do once you've set it all up is press the classic in green where it says one to one devices. And then what will load eventually will be a game pin. And then you can encourage your pupils during your live call to go onto the Kahoot app on their iPad enter the game pin 80515 and then they will be able to join as well. If pupils don't have their own devices, if they're in ELC to P3, then they can go on to kahoot.it on a web browser or download the app on another device and still put in that pin. Once players join, you can then play along as you do in class in exactly the same way. And then you get all the results and the reports as you go on. So that's how you can do it for a live lesson and the next little chunk of video will show you how you're able to do it for a pre-recorded one. So there's a couple of ways that you can set up Kahoot's to be sent for pre-recorded lessons. One way is by clicking onto the example there. What you can do is you can actually share the entire Kahoot with them, which means that they can use the study option. Now on the study option, they're given the choice of using the questions as flashcards to practice the questions or a challenge yourself, a test yourself, sorry. So then they, they can go through those questions in their own time. They can look at all the answers that are there and they can gain some more knowledge from them. So that's one way of doing it. To send that link, you press the three dots on your Kahoot, you press share, and then the link is there for you to copy. So you can copy that either into an assignment or into a channel, and then people can get onto it that way. What you might want to do though, if you're wanting it more as an assessment piece, is you can use the play option, but rather than doing teach for virtual classrooms like we did in the live lesson example, is you can choose assign challenge for self-paced learning. If you click on that, you'll see because of the free subscription that we get with the Borders iPads, is there's a limit of 100 players, but that's more than enough for one class in a, in, to have a go of it. You can then have a timer question on if you want, or you can turn that off as well. And you can also choose whether you randomize your answer order or you can also hide the player position so that they only see the top five shown so they're not fully sure on their order of uh, where they're competing about. Once you press create, it will create it as a challenge. And there's two ways that you can share this challenge with your class. That code there, 050530084, is a pin. So if the pupils were wanting to enter the pin, as they do at the bottom of the app for the live ones, they can put that in and it will take them to the challenge version of it. Or the other way to do it is to copy the link and then that link can be pasted into either an assignment or a channel and then they can join the challenge that way. So they can either go in by pin or by copying the link. And obviously the pin that is shown there is just for this specific Kahoot. You would generate your own pin uh, after that. When players are into the challenge, they get the same set of questions as in the live lesson, but they can do it in their own time. So they can do it morning, noon or night, whenever they want to do it, they can. What, you're in, uh, what I would encourage you to do though, is make sure that when they're asked to enter their name, that they put in their real name. My pupils are quite good at putting in nicknames and things, but it's good if they put in their real uh, name so that you can see exactly who has answered the questions. If you go to the report section as well, I'll show you a little example of one that was done by my class as well. What this shows here is it shows their name. You can see there that a couple of them have put in some nicknames, so I'm not entirely sure who that would be. I'd have to go and check. But what I like in the reports is it gives us some things uh, in the reports that says which questions were quite difficult. So for example, in this instrument of an orchestra picture quiz, five out of the 20 questions were proven difficult. You can see, for example, name this instrument. Only 6% were able to name that one shown, 13% able to answer that one. So that could be used if you're doing a pre-assessment. You could then go and use that uh, data, that information within your teaching lesson, and you could make comment on that in that lesson that you deliver. Okay? Hopefully that's quite helpful for you. It's a very good site for using for formative assessment uh, and we'll maybe do some more work on Kahoot as the sessions go on. That's all for this week's Inspire Q&A video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I'm hoping that you found some of the videos quite helpful today and will either enhance or improve your teaching and learning practice in the coming weeks and months. If you've got any questions for next week's video, then please email them over to me. My email address is on the screen just there. It's gw 12 grahamroddy 3 at glow.sch.uk. There are going to be new videos that come out on Fridays. Now, they will either be weekly or fortnightly, depending on demand. 
can. So the more questions that you have, the more videos there will be. Uh, if you subscribe to the channel by pressing the subscribe button, then you'll get those new videos straight to your device. Or if you're not bothered about subscribing, then the YouTube link will also be emailed out to you on a weekly basis with a wee summary about what the topics are, okay? Thank you for watching. I've been Roddy Graham and take care.